Hey everybody, welcome back to Watch and Carry. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a modification on a brand new watch I just received. This is the uh, calculator watch. Uh, there's the code number right there. And uh, I was attracted to this just because of the olive drab color. Um, kind of like olive green on a watch, so that's what it looks like from the factory. And then on this particular watch, it's sold only with this negative display, which means the background is a dark color and the numerals are in a light color. Now, as good as this looks uh, in pictures and in bright light, the watch is a little bit hard to read, uh, particularly because the font is quite small. And then the display, at least the negative filter they chose, is pretty dark. I've done a few modifications on uh, converting my watches to negative displays. And usually the effect I get is much uh, brighter. I usually get a blacker black and a whiter white for the numerals. So I have much better contrast. But I also usually have backlights on my other watches that I've worked on. In this case, you don't have a backlight option. So what I'm going to do is uh, remove the factory uh, polarizing filter that's already laid on there, uh, clean up the display a little bit, and then apply my own polarizing film, but orient it in such a way that we get the normal um, non-negative display like this watch, which is also a factory Casio, the white background with the black numerals. So it might take away from the stealth look of this watch a little bit, but as I'm pretty experienced with working with these, if I don't like it, I can always go ahead and reverse it. But for now, I know that I'm having a hard time reading this in bright sunlight, so I'd like to go ahead and change that. And then I'm going to uh, change out the factory strap. This is a pretty cool strap. It's actually uh, 20 millimeters at the lugs, which is a little bit unusual for these uh, smaller Casios, which are usually 18. But I'm gonna switch it to this spare strap that I have laying around. A lot of you have noticed on my Instagram page that I love uh, Zarek ribbed straps. And this is a dark brown, which I think will go pretty well with the watch. Okay, so this is my first time working on this watch. So this video might be a little bit clumsy. It might take a little bit longer than usual because I'm still trying to figure this out. But if you have any comments or suggestions, please put them down below. So let's go ahead and get this strap off. Take a micro screwdriver and just like the world times, you have these um, four screws on the back. Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to remove the strap as well. So take your lug removal tool, just push inward on these spring bars and this should come out pretty easy. I'll also put a link in the description below where to buy this watch. I bought this um, a while back from Amazon Prime or Amazon during a Prime Day deal and got it for pretty cheap, about 18 bucks. Now comes the uh, tricky part. So I've heard removing the watch module, which is this internal silver part from the case, which is the green part, is a little bit tricky compared to the regular AE 1200 and 1300. So let's start with the O-ring first. Let's see if we can get that removed. Okay, that's not too bad. And this looks like a bi-directional O-ring. The world times usually have a little nub at the 12 o'clock that indicates where it goes. This one looks like you can put this in either direction. So we'll set that aside. Okay, now for the case, or for the module. 
So let's take a look here. So I'm seeing a tooth right over here at the six and another one at the 12. I'm wondering if I push in on that, if I can go ahead and remove it. So I'm using the flat end of my spring bar tool. I'm just gonna push in there. Okay, that's not working. Let's try the other side, the 12 maybe. Oh, that's good. Slowly coming up. Let's go from the other end now. Okay, so that wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Okay, so the way you remove this watch module is you have this clip here. You can see it right there, and you also have another one at the six. You push on either one and you just kind of work at it. It probably would be easier if you kind of have one tool pushing in the clip and another tool uh, lifting up from a strong portion on the back of the module. But anyways, that's how it pops out. And this is kind of what you're left with. So we have here the components for the keypad. And I'm gonna set this to the side and cover this. So that way we can limit air going in there or dust. And then now we have the watch module. Now on the AE 1200 and 1300, you have these clips usually that you go ahead and remove to get to the internal parts. So I'm going to do that next. Okay, so I'm just gonna carefully lift the side there to loosen these. Okay, it looks like we loosened one side and you've got one over here on that side. Okay. Oh, and then you've got two more here at the bottom. There you go. And two more here at the top. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, now we can take this apart. Okay, that looks pretty familiar. Now on the world times, I know there's usually a spring that you have to be mindful of. So there's that spring right there in this position. So I'll push up on that so you can see it. See that spring coming up? So just be very mindful of that spring uh, if it falls off, you'll have to reinsert it. So I'm going to take mine off and just check if there's a certain orientation that this matters to go in. Okay, so there's your spring. And to me, it looks like you have a slightly wider tip over here and a slightly narrow tip over here. The wider tip will go to the top that's facing you when you reinsert it back. So if I was to reinsert this, I'm grabbing it by the wider tip and then the narrow tip is facing down. And then I'll go ahead and put that inside the hole for the spring which is, make sure we're in focus here, right over here. And drop that in there. Okay, so just take note of that. Take a note of your landmarks. You have this gold contact here, the silver 
So it's almost like 12 o'clock, two or three o'clock, and then right here around seven o'clock, you have that spring uh, location. Okay, so set that off to the side and we'll cover that as well. Okay, now let's go to the watch module here. And I need to be very careful with removing this because there could be an order to how the parts are assembled. So, I'm gonna gently lift up on the board like so and turn it over. Okay, so we don't have any white um, pieces of material that usually fall out like you do on the world times. Okay, and I just wanna know my orientation here. So uh, this is the screen and here you have the silver contact at the 12. So just know that you have a silver part going to the portion where the screen is and the orientation of this is the black of this should touch the black of this so that gets on the inside okay so we'll set this guy off to the side and cover that as well and here's our screen we're going to carefully pop this guy out okay and it looks like let's turn this in the right orientation Again, this is 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock. If you kind of push at the top portion, you can kind of lift up the screen like so. And it's kind of stuck on the bottom still. So I think you have to kind of lift up and pull out. That's what it feels like at least. Let me see. Okay, just like that. Okay. So this is what it looks like when you pull it out. You have the 12 o'clock here, the six o'clock here, and you have this little rubber material. Um, not rubber, it's foam. I know it's important. Somebody told me what this is called again, but it really is important to allow the display to function properly on the world times the foam has comes in two pieces and it can be removed in this case i don't know if you can remove it this way so let's just take a look here and gently manipulate this to see if it can be removed Okay, I see. So if you look at the foam, you'll notice that the foam is resting on its short edge and it's kind of pointing up on its long edge. You see that it's kind of like 90 degrees this way. So that skinny edge that it's lying on is meant to insert into this trough right here that runs like this. You can even see that there's a holding point at this end and a holding point at this end. So that way the long end of the uh, foam can stick down into it. But what happens first is your screen goes down into here and the screen will go all the way up into here. And then you'll put your foam in these two slots down on top of the screen. So it's important to put the screen first and then the foam second. That's at least what I'm gathering here. Of course, there is the possibility that, I, what, that when I reassemble this, this watch is gonna be broken. But, uh, you know, that's kinda how I figured out how to work with the world time. So we're just 
playing around here as we go. Now the orientation of the foam, I don't know if that matters, whether I have to keep it in this orientation or if I put it in this orientation. So that I'm not sure, but it's 50-50. So if I reassemble it and it doesn't work, I can always disassemble it and flip it over and hopefully that will do it. So I'm gonna remove this off of the display gently, cover this up and set this to the side. Okay, but now you can see that there is easily a landmark for your um, 12 o'clock and six o'clock position on the uh, screen. So we are on the back of the display right now. And this little area here at the end that is a little bit thicker and clear compared to here where it's thin and clear, this is the six. Now, how do you tell front from back? That is a good question. Okay, let's see. I'm going to play around with this for a bit. Okay. Okay, I don't really know how to tell front from back, but one thing I am noticing is that, and I hope this can be picked up on camera. Come on, focus. Okay, take a look at how the light reflects on the black. In this orientation, it's more of a matte finish, not very shiny, but if I flip it over, it's quite shiny. The shiny part facing you right now is the front. This would be the part facing you when the watch is assembled. And the matte finish part on the back is the part that faces the inside of the watch. So because we're going to be taking out the negative display, I'm gonna be working on the shiny side. Okay, so just make sure you get a nice shine on that display. Also, I want you to listen to this as I'm dragging my um, tweezers here gently, I don't want to scratch the display, you can hear the tweezers uh, jump from the top polarizing film to the middle part of the display. This display as it sits right now, I can tell it looks like it has three layers. You have that middle part, you have the matte finish part on the back and you have the shiny part on the front. What we want to do is remove the front shiny part, which is the polarizing film, replace it with another polarizing film, but then change the orientation of that polarizing film. So that way we get a positive display rather than a negative, which is what it looks like from the factory. So you can hear it here. I'm on the polarizing side. There. Click. That click tells you that that's the difference between this layer in the middle and this layer on the top. Okay, so we want to remove that top layer. Now, in my experience, to remove uh, polarizing uh, filters, you're going to need several tools. Uh, I like to work with a guitar pick because that's what's going to help sandwich out this layer. Now to get the initial uh, polarizing layer propped up so that way you can fit your guitar pick in there, I like to use a straight pin and I'll stick it in the display just enough to prop it up and then you grab your guitar pick and remove that out. Once you remove the polarizing filter out, you're gonna be left with what I'm assuming is glue that was used to adhere this layer to this layer. So you need to clean up that glue. And what I like to use is a uh, Goo Gone. To massage the Goo Gone into the glue, I like to use Q-tips. And I have these uh, Q-tips that are fine tipped, like so. And I'll put that in the description below. Okay, and then you're gonna need a microfiber cloth that's clean to clean up the um, uh, the goo gone so that way it's not wet. And then lastly, of course, you're going to need polarizing film. So what we're using here is uh, zero degree linear polarizing film. 
I would type in those exact words into Amazon or eBay to find it. And then we're going to insert this. Now this type of polarizing film is adhesive, which means it's kind of like a sticker. The front is non-sticky. The side facing you right now is the side that would face you on the watch. The back is the back that would face the inside of the watch. And this side has a film that when you remove it, it exposes a sticky side. So that way it sticks to the screen. Okay. Uh, whether you want to use adhesive or non-adhesive polarizing film is up to you. If you plan to reverse this process later on, it's probably better to use non-adhesive because it's easier to remove and reverse this whole, this whole job. Okay, so we're going to get our materials ready and I'll pause right here while I'm doing that. Okay, let's go ahead and prep our display. So I have a clear bowl here. Nothing's in it at the moment. I'm going to pour just a little bit of the goo gone into here. Just enough to cover the bottom. Okay, then we're going to take our display here. Move our towel onto the work area. Again, make sure you're looking at the shiny side. Take your Q-tip. And then on the shiny side, go to the edge and just put a little bit of goo gone there. And that will allow the goo gone to seep in between the polarizing filter and the middle layer. I'm gonna cover all four sides. Okay, and I will let that sit upright for a few minutes to allow the goo gone to kind of seep into one end and do its magic. So I'm going to cut out the camera here and we'll chime back in. Okay, we've done about five minutes of letting the goo gone sit there. Again, just turn it over. That's the matte side. That's the shiny side. Okay, you're gonna take your pin. Okay, and then you're going to drag the pin over the polarizing film until you hear that click again. Again, you're trying to move that pin in between these two layers. It's okay if you scratch the top of this film because we're removing it anyway, so don't worry about that. Okay, can you hear that? Okay, once it clicks, put it in the corner and you want to push up on the uh, pin. Be careful not to run it into your fingers. There we go. Okay, you see how I made... A little pocket there with my pin. Push the pin parallel to the polarizing film and then remove the pin like that. That's it. Now we're going to go to our guitar pick. Now if your guitar pick is too thick, what you might want to do is uh, bevel one of the edges. So I took my knife and actually sharpened one of these edges here. I'm going to stick that beveled edge into the place where I put my pin and you should be able to lift up like that on the filter. 
It can also help to coat this edge in um, Goo Gone. So I'm going to dip this in my Goo Gone just so that as we're running through the filter, you're also loosening the glue with the Goo Gone on your guitar pick. So I'm going to lift up like this. Oops, looks like I lost my edge. So we'll go back to the pin, pick it up again, loosen it up again. There we go. Okay, and then you want to rock this guitar pick back and forth, parallel to the um, display. And that's coming off nicely. Okay, I'm going to hold that end, free edge with my left index finger, grab a little bit more goo gun on my guitar pick. You'll notice the display start to discolor a little bit. It'll show like pink and green and clear. And that's just from the pressure of the guitar pick coming over. So that's completely normal. And this should be peeling off relatively easily. If you're having to force it, you need more Goo Gone. And you need to wait a little bit longer for that Goo Gone to take action. So almost done. There we go. So we have removed the polarizing film like that. And there is the display underneath. Okay, set your Goo Gone to the side. Let's go ahead and take this display and I'm going to dry it and check for any glue. This looks pretty clear actually, I'm quite surprised. Okay, so usually on the world times when I work on this at this stage in the job, I should be seeing lots of clumps of glue. The display should be really looking dirty and gummy. Right now it looks pretty clear, but I'm gonna give it a clean anyways. Here's the film we just removed. See that? This is polarizing film in your hand. The reason why it looks so cloudy is we've loosened and gummed up that glue below. But this material is exactly the same, just maybe a different uh, grade, but it is the exact same thing as this on the right. These are both polarizing films. And so what happens is on your display here below, when you orient it like this, like it was from the factory, you get a regular, you get a negative display. So you'll see here that the polarizing filter in this orientation looks black, right? But I want you to see what happens when I change this orientation and turn it 90 degrees. So again, it looks pretty black, right? When I change it 90 degrees, it looks clear. Black and clear. This is how it looked like from the factory. When you buy watches from the factory that look like this, this watch, that means that the filter is turned in this direction. And so that's what we're doing today. We're going to cut out a new film, a new filter of polarizing film and lay it in this orientation to get that bright display. Save this piece that you just cut because this is going to be our template to trace the exact size that we need. Okay, we'll go ahead and dry up our guitar pick. Simple tools, guitar picks and little pins. I would have never thought that they would be that useful for modifying Casios, but they've proven invaluable. So let's clean up this display. This looks pretty clean already, but I find it hard to believe that there's no glue on this. So what you'll do is you'll take your Q-tip coated with Goo Gone again and just lightly dab it over the display like so. And then again, I'm gonna let this sit for about five minutes, let it do its job. It's going to start to um, emulsive, or it start to coagulate the glue, clump it together, which ma should make it easier to remove. And then you'll use your microfiber cloth to wipe off that glue residue. So we'll come back here 
in a few minutes. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and trace our uh, polarizing filter. So set your display carefully to the side. Take your polarizing film, just give it a quick wipe down. And I'm gonna wipe down my gloves too. We'll change gloves here in a second. Okay, so I'm glad I braved deciding to take apart this watch. You know, like when you're taking apart a watch, even if it's only an $18 watch, I always get a little bit nervous, but you know, I, I love modifying watches. Um, and it's the best way to learn is on something that's cheap, I guess. So if you make a mistake, it's not too bad to buy a new one. Now, um, what's gonna happen here is I don't wanna cut it in this orientation. I wanna cut it in a different orientation. So how do you know which orientation to hold your polarizing film to? Because both sides look the same and do I cut it this way? Do I cut it this way? So one simple way to do it is go ahead and uh, I have to dry my screen. I should have done this beforehand, but okay. Take your display that we just worked with. Okay. And then uh, the bright side should be facing you. Take your polarizing filter and put it over the display. Okay. Now look what happens here. Right now I'm getting some weird like rainbowy colors. If you see any of these rainbowy, bluish, purplish colors, you're on the wrong side. So we flip our film over. Okay, so now I know I'm on the right side, but do I cut it this way or do I cut it this way? Well, again, take a look at the display. If I put it in this orientation, the display is pitch black, which is exactly the same as it was before, so I don't want that. 90 degrees, right? So let's turn this 90 degrees. Voila. So we know that we have to cut in this orientation. So because I need to cut in this orientation, I'll put my display again to the side, put a little bit more goo gone on it to let it sit. Okay. Go back to my uh, cutout that I had done. Put the cutout. Let's try to put it in the corner so we can preserve the rest of the film here. Okay, just kind of hold that in place. Grab a Sharpie and make sure that that cutout is all the way to the edge on the top. Okay, we're going to hold and trace. It's a little bit tricky. Just make sure you're lined up here on the top. Okay, start with your sides, trace those. And that way you know you have the left to right down. Okay, go ahead and check your Sharpie lines to make sure that you haven't moved. And then now you do the top. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Okay. Okay, we're gonna hold on to that. Don't throw that out yet, just in case you need to trace again. Set that guy to the side. Okay, now uh, remember that this is adhesive polarizing film. So this is again made of three layers. You have a top protective film the polarizing filter and a back protective film that is between the protection and the adhesive underneath. So how do we know if we're working with the top or the bottom because they both look the same? Again, you want a label. So I like to write here a T for top. That tells me that that side is facing me. Okay, take a pair of scissors and carefully Cut this guy out. Cut it as exact as possible because if you cut the screen too short, you're gonna see the uh, exposed screen below. If you cut it too large, 
you're going to develop air bubbles underneath your polarizing film when you uh, reassemble the watch. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'll just cut from the side here. Great. Okay, check your Sharpie lines. If you still see any Sharpie, you need to cut those off because it's too large. So we got a little bit of Sharpie here on the bottom. pretty good. Just a tad more on the bottom here. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so Let's set this polarizing film to the side carefully. Okay, let's go back to our towel and grab our screen display that we are working with. So at this point, it's been sitting in the Gugon for a while. Go ahead and gently massage display and you should be seeing clumps of glue pop up but the sound you want to hear for is like a squeaky sound so that tells you you're right on the display if you don't hear any squeaky sound that means the glue is still present wow so very interesting so it looks like not a whole lot of glue which i guess makes sense because i didn't see a lot of glue to begin with but i just wanted to take the precaution of cleaning this so clean this up And I guess we're done. Wow, there's usually tons of glue on the world times when you remove the top polarizing film. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes to get it all off. So if this works out in the end, this will be the easiest conversion I've, I've had to do on the display. Okay, nice and dry. We're gonna flip our towel over to the clean side. Switch out my gloves here. Okay, hopefully the black glove is nice and visible in the video for you. It's kind of hard to find white nitrile gloves that don't have any powder on them. Maybe orange might be better next time, so. And the brand I'm using, by the way, for the gloves uh, they were sold out of regular gloves, but these are pretty good. These are dual layered nitro gloves. I like the dual layer because they have less of a chance of ripping, which means you don't have to use as many pairs for a job. So that's the brand right there. Okay, brand new gloves. So we have our um, display here. Go ahead and take the edges and just gently dab them over the towel to dry off any goo gone that might still be there. Okay, the back of the display too might have had a little bit, which is fine, but you just need to clean that off. Okay, and then we will take a clean microfiber towel here and just kind of clean that display a little bit more.
just wish they put a backlight on this watch. That would have been nice. But, you know, it's a pretty thin module compared to the world time. So maybe they just had to make a choice of what to include. And calculator went in and the other part went out. So there we go. Okay, now uh, when it comes to installing your film, turn this guy over. Okay, now what I want you to look at here is you see how you have a very thick free edge here that's clear and a very thin edge here that's clear. This is your six o'clock, this is your 12 o'clock. Okay, the thin is the 12 o'clock. So you need to put this polarizing film as close to the 12 o'clock as possible and leave the thick clear layer exposed at the bottom. Okay, this should not be covered in polarizing film. Okay, one more wipe down. Give it a quick blast with my air blaster here. Set that guy down. Take your polarizing film. Now remember, the T for uh, top faces you. So you're going to go to the back and you're going to peel the back. Which means that on the bottom now is the adhesive layer. Okay, we're going to take this and line this up with the top of the display. Like so. It might actually be better if I use my tweezers here to really get a fine touch. Ooh, okay, that is tricky. Okay, so what I did was I laid the filter down. I didn't put a lot of pressure. It clinged just a little bit with the adhesive, but then I had to slowly push it up because that thick clear end needs to be clear on this side and just slowly lined it up. It also helps because that really br uh, light gray display underneath your polarizing film will pop up. And if you see any edges that have that light color that tells you you need to move the filter in that direction to cover that up. Now the watch case and the housing of course will cover up maybe any small exposed areas. So maybe you might be okay if you didn't fully cover it but you really want to get as close to covering it as possible. Now that I feel we're pretty well covered, I'm going to gently apply pressure. Okay. And then roll my fingers from center to out, kind of work out any air bubbles, rotate, and do the same over here. And you can see the display, unlike before, is light colored. Okay. Then I'll take a Q-tip that is dry and I will slowly work my way from the inside, circular motions, out, kind of remove any air bubbles. I don't see any, because it's hard to see air bubbles on a light display, unlike the negative, but just in case they're there, remove those guys out, 
remember that we still have the protective film with that letter T on the top, so it's okay to be a little abrasive on this layer. It's getting removed anyways. Okay, that looks good. Now what we'll do is uh, take your pair of tweezers or plot or um, yeah tweezers here. Be very careful removing this layer because you don't want to scratch the true filter underneath. So gently lift up from the corner. Okay, and then you'll grab the free edge. Okay, like that. Hopefully you can see that. And we'll remove that like that. This gets thrown away. Okay. All right. If you made it this far, the hard work, I hope, is over. So now we have to reassemble our watch. So we'll move this here. And we'll grab that foam piece that we had earlier, like that, okay? Now remember the foam, it has a thin edge here. And what we wanna do is you notice that the length of it is facing you now, you wanna stand it up on its thin edge and insert it that way. But the first thing you wanna do is install the screen. So you're gonna take your plastic housing, this black bare piece here faces down like that. Turn this sideways, take your display, make sure not to scratch the top, lift from the bottom, identify your landmarks. So we have a thick clear end here at the bottom, thin at the top, that's my six o'clock. And I know that the matte finish is on the back. So the matte finish should be facing me. Thick edge is on my right side here. And we're going to insert that thick edge first at an angle. So we're going to try to get it like that. Okay. And if you look here, you see that black clip right there, very thin. And there's another one here. Those should be sitting on top of the display which is why you slide an angle. Go ahead and push the top down so that way it becomes level. If there's any air that you see here, go ahead and blast that out or any dust. Okay, then we're gonna take our foam. Okay, and again, we have the thick edge like this. We're going to turn it, turn it, turn it so the thin edge is facing you and that's how you're gonna drop it down just inside those clips. So that side looks good. And that side looks good. Okay, you see that we have a clip here, and then the foam here, clip here, foam here, and then gently tap down on the foam. So that way it's flush with the plastic housing. It might Protrude up just a little bit, but that's normal. Okay. Carefully set this guy down so the foam does not pop back up again. Okay, we're going to grab our circuit board. I think is that what it's called? We remember that the black faces the inside, so we should be here. And as for orientation, you remember that this contact is towards the bottom. I think it's towards the bottom. Yes, that is towards the bottom, it should be. Like that. I'd recommend you use plastic tweezers here, not metal. Okay, well, let me see what happens if I turn this the opposite way. Just want to check the orientation. Okay, so that way it sits pretty well.
see what happens if I turn it this way. Okay, actually, I am incorrect. So I'm going to lift this up. Again, the screen is here on the top. Turn it this way so that way the contacts are facing upward. Drop that in. And then you should have a tab here and a tab here coming up through the board. And this sits pretty flush. Okay, next we're going to take the other end over here. My spring fell off, so insert your spring as we had mentioned before. I'm grabbing it by the... If I can pick it up. There we go. All right, I'm grabbing the spring by the thick part. And I'm going to insert it in that hole. Okay. Here's the contact, there's the spring at the seven o'clock position. Okay. Gently set that down so the spring doesn't pop up too much. Take your display, hold it from behind, flip it over, and then insert down in. These clips that we removed at the beginning, go ahead and gently push down on the plastic part that's black. And you can listen for the click. So two clips here on the top. Okay, you might need to push the clips in after they go over. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, according to this sign, it says after a battery change, you wanna do an all clear. We still want to do an all clear because we technically remove the battery from the display. Now to do an all clear, you're going to look for the button that says AC here at the bottom and kind of hard to see, but it's pointing towards this hole. I should be using a single pointer. AC, that hole, one end of the paper clip goes in that hole. The other end goes to a piece that's metal. So I have a paper clip here that's bent like a U. So we're going to touch the AC hole and then touch a piece of metal momentarily. Go ahead and remove and you should be cleared on the display, which should be functioning normally. If your display is not displaying all the numerals or some of the numerals are not appearing solid, like there's a part that's faded, it could mean that these clips on the side are not pushed in all the way. If it's still failing to show you anything on the display, it could also mean that you did not lay the foam in correctly. It could mean that the foam is either being pinched by the display or you didn't push it down far enough. So because my display looks perfect, I already know that the foam was laid down correctly. Okay, and look at that. We've got the negative, uh, the positive display. Okay, so just for comparison, here's a negative display and here's a positive. Much easier to read, maybe not as stealth looking. So some people may not like this mod, but I kind of like it. And then we will insert this back into the watch. I'm actually going to put a yellow filter over this later on, but just to speed up this video, um, I'm going to put this back in, show it to you, and then go ahead and push that in. Obviously, make sure you have the right orientation. And just push in from the 6 o'clock and the 12 o'clock first. So you get those clips in and then you can push in the sides gently. Okay, go ahead and check to make sure that it looks pretty even. Okay, that looks pretty good. Go ahead and take your O-ring. Now, if this watch is pretty old for you, what you're gonna wanna do is grab some Hops number nine lubricating oil, rub it between your fingers and run it through the entire O-ring gently. Okay, I've already done that, so you can see that the O-ring is a little bit moist. Okay, you'll notice that you have a long edge and a short edge on the O-ring. The short edges go to the 6 and the 12 o'clock positions, 
like so. It doesn't matter if it's top or bottom. And then you'll notice that there's a track or a trough for that O-ring to sit inside. Go ahead and set this guy in. And lightly tap any areas of the O-ring that are sticking out. This is what's going to give you that water resistance. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, take your case back. This is the 12 o'clock position. This is the orientation that the case should be in. For the case back. Insert that down. Okay. Go ahead and take your screws. And screw these in loosely. Okay, go ahead and rotate. Check between the case back and the case to make sure that you don't have any O-ring being exposed and being pinched. If you do, you'll have to remove the case back and reposition that O-ring. Everything looks good, so now we'll fully tighten down. Okay. Almost done. Go ahead and I'll just show you what it looks like on the regular strap here. Okay, that's how it looks like with a positive display now. Much easier to read, so much better. Okay, and then I'm going to switch out the strap for this. And I'm actually not gonna switch out the strap in this video. I did mention I would at the beginning, but I'm gonna save the modifications for this watch for a separate video. I'm just gonna keep this stock, but just a preview of what it's gonna look like, okay? But uh, let's attach these spring bars. Okay. And these are uh, 20 millimeter spring bars. I forgot to mention. I, I might have said 18 at the beginning, but these are 20. And there you go. There is your modified stock Casio calculator watch. It looks like the spring bars I chose here are a little bit too small. So it's falling apart here. I'm going to get a 20. I think that's an 18 I chose by accident, but uh, you get the idea here. And uh, yeah, so much easier to read. Okay, let's turn off the lights. It's, it's daylight outside right now. So... Uh, you can see here that even in low light, it's much easier to read. This would have been completely impossible to read in um, in the negative mode. But uh, that's, that's the setup right there. All right, guys, so I hope you guys found this useful. If you have any comments or questions, please put them down in the description below. This watch comes in several other colors. I believe they have a blue and a white and probably a pure black. So I would assume that the work... Uh, would be the same for all those if you want to make it into a non-negative display. Uh, any comments, questions, or suggestions, please put them down. If you guys could subscribe, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, please check out my Instagram in the descriptions below. And as always, have fun, and I'll see you guys on the next one.